All right, scriptural overlaps between the Old Testament church and the New Covenant church, um, which we see now in the magisterium of the Catholic church. First of all, uh, this I, there's a great video. Uh, there's a great discussion on YouTube between Trent Horn and Swan Sona. I would definitely uh, recommend that you look that up because uh, Swan Sona goes into much, much more detail than I can in a TikTok. But um, basically, Jesus came uh, as the new Moses. And I don't think that that can, I don't think that, that that's disputed by anybody, Protestants or Catholics, right? And Moses instituted a governing body with the courts and uh and such uh to protect the torah and to guide the church um you know into the times to come and jesus did the same thing with the apostles uh he breathed on them and he said receive the holy spirit um whatever you know whoever sins you forgive are forgiven uh, whoever sins you retain are retained. How can the apostles or their successors have the ability to forgive sins if we're not supposed to even tell them our sins, right? So there's confession right there. Um, also is uh, God in Isaiah 1, 26 and 27, he promised to restore the church, not to abolish it, not to build a new church. Um, the new church is a restoration of the old church. And Jesus even said, uh, listen to the Pharisees. Don't do what they say because they don't live what they speak. But listen to what, you know, obey them because they sit on the seat of Moses. Just as the Pope sits on the seat of Peter. And Peter was given this, uh, this special primacy in Matthew 16 verses 18 and 19. Um, and this is reflected when he gives Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. This is reflected from Isaiah 36. When, uh, when God makes Eliakim the prime minister of the Davidic kingdom. So David is the king and Eliakim is his voice. He has the king's authority when the king is away. Just like Jesus is the king and Peter was given that authority when Jesus went away. This will be continued in part two.